Chapter 4, The Chimps Jane was discouraged by how little progress she was making with the chimps. Then, to make matters worse, she and Van both got sick. Very sick. Most likely, both women had come down with malaria. They had no drugs with them to treat the disease. Jane had been told that there was no malaria at Gombe, so she didn't take medicine along. Jane blamed herself for that. For two weeks, Jane and her mother never left their tent. All they did was lie in bed and sweat. <clears throat> malaria. Malaria is one of the most widespread diseases in the world. People catch it from being bitten by a certain kind of mosquito. Malaria does damage to the liver and to blood cells. The symptoms are high fevers, vomiting, chills, and bad headaches. People in Africa, south of the Sahara Desert, are most at risk for malaria. Insect sprays can kill indoor mosquitoes, drugs can treat the disease, but as of yet, there is no vaccine to prevent malaria. More than one million people still die of it every year. For many days, Van's fever rose as high as 105 degrees. Both Jane and Van were lucky. They recovered. The minute that she felt well enough, Jane returned to the forest. At last, her patience paid off. It was October. Van had gotten home to England. Jane was on her own. She began exploring the area she called the peak. Every day, rain or shine, she climbed up the steep slope of the peak into the forest. Little by little, the chimps became used to Jane watching them. One day, she saw a female hold out her hand to a male who kissed it. She saw two baby chimps playing tug-of-war with the twig. Jane could tell many of the chimps apart, and she gave them names. Flo was an old female chimp. Jane liked Flo a lot. She was a very popular chimp, although, to Jane at least, Flo was funny looking. She had a big round nose and torn ears. Flo had a baby. Jane called her Fifi, and she called Fifi's older brothers Fabin and Figgin. Flo was a caring mother. She protected Fifi from the rain. She carefully groomed her young. Grooming means being means cleaning their fur. Flo was a playful mother, but she was also firm. She never let her children get out of line. Ollie was Flo's friend. Ollie was also a female. Her face was very long and her lips jiggled a lot. Another chimp, a male, looked a lot like Ollie. Jane was quite sure he was Ollie's brother. She named him William. In animal studies, animals are usually given numbers, not names. In fact, many scientists think it's a bad idea to name the animals that are being studied. They worry that it will make the animals seem too human. Jane definitely did not think of the chimps as humans, but she did see the chimps as individuals. They had different personalities. William was timid and fearful. Gilka was a show-off, always looking for attention. Frodo was a bully, a dangerous bully. One time, Jane had been watching Frodo when suddenly he charged. He beat and kicked her. Frodo started to leave, then came back, beat Jane more, and dragged her off to the edge of a cliff. What did Frodo do next? He threw her over the side. It was a steep drop, but luckily there were bushes that stopped Jane's fall. Even so, she was banged up pretty bad. Chimps learn human language? For many years, scientists tried to teach chimps to make the same sounds as humans do. No one ever had success. Chimps' vocal cords make it impossible for them to speak. Then in 1966, two researchers tried something different. They began teaching American Sign Language to the 10-month-old chip named Washu. In time, Washu learned to make the signs for about 130 words. According to her teachers, Washu could also create a word when she didn't know the sign for something. On seeing a swan, Washu made the sign for both water and bird. Did this mean that Washu understood words? It certainly seemed so. However, as truly learning a language, <coughs> to many scientists this did not count as truly learning a language. Language involves making sentences, using grammar, and having conversations. None of the chimps could do anything like this. In many ways, the chimps behaved like humans. Although unable to speak, they had their own means of communicating. 
Jane learned to tell what their different grunts, pants, and screams meant. For example, chimps greeted one another with the soft, panting grunts. A certain loud scream was a cry for help. Chimps, like humans, expressed feelings through gestures. They hugged and kissed one another. They bowed to show respect. They patted friends on the back for comfort. They also shook their fists or threw rocks to show anger. To Jane, naming the chimps just felt right. Did Jane have a favorite chimp? Yes. Jane called him David Greybeard because of his silvery hair around his chin. In one of her books, she wrote, David Greybeard had the most beautiful eyes of them all, large and lustrous, set wide apart. They somehow expressed his whole personality. David Greybeard had a calm nature and was not afraid of Jane. He was the first chimp who seemed to accept her. One day, Jane held out a piece of fruit to David Greybeard. He came up to her, took the fruit, and then held it in his head. In his. <clears throat> what a special moment that was for Jane. David Greybeard taught Jane Goodall a lot about chimpanzees. For a long time, scientists believed that chimpanzees were herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat only fruits and vegetables. They do not eat meat. But one day, Jane saw David Greybeard and several other chimpanzees in the upper branches of a tree. They were grouped around something. Something turned out to be a dead piglet. <clears throat> David Greybeard handed out pieces of meat to the others. He also let them bite off meat themselves. For three hours, the chimps fed on the piglet. What Jane watched proved that chimps are omnivores. They eat meat as well as lots of food from plants. This was interesting news. But a couple of weeks later, Jane came upon David Greybeard doing something even more amazing. It was a day of heavy rains. Jane was tired and dripping wet. Though her binocul through her binoculars, she spotted David Greybeard. He was squatting down by a nest of termites. Termites are insects that chimps like to eat. Termite nests are like big mounds with a hole at the top. David Greybeard was poking a long blade of grass into the hole of the nest of to fish out termites. David was using the blade of grass as a tool. It did a great job of supplying David Greybeard with na tasty termites. Why was this so amazing? Up until 1960, scientists believed that humans were the only animals able to make tools. Making tools may not sound like such a big deal, but think about it. <clears throat> a dog digs a hole with its front paws. It does not know how to make a shovel to dig a deeper hole more easily. Also, its paws are not able to hold a shovel. An animal needs a big, smart brain to make tools. An animal also needs hands with thumbs in order to grasp tools. Chimps have big brains. They also have thumbs. Still. Scientists did not think that chimps knew how to make tools. But Jane watched David Greybeard do exactly that. Once David Greybeard was gone, Jane went over to get a closer look at the grass tools. Jane tried pushing one into the nest herself. Sure enough, she could feel termites grab hold of the grass. When she took out the blade of grass, the termites were kicking their legs about. In her book, Reason for Hope, Jane wrote that it was hard for me to believe what I had seen. It had long been thought that we were the only creatures on earth that used and made tools. What she saw proved that was not so. Another time, Jane came upon David Greybeard and a big, strong chimp named Goliath. They were fishing for termites together. They kept a supply of extra grass tools in case any broke. Sometimes they picked up twigs and stripped off any leaves before using them. Again, this may not sound like it is sounding at first, but the chimps were making changes to the twigs so that they worked better as tools. Chimps also used chewed clumps of leaves as sponges to soak up drinking water. And a whole leaves made were good for washcloths for cleaning themselves. Louis Leakey was thrilled when Jane sent news of David Greybeard's fishing trips. Leakey knew he'd been right about sending Jane Goodall to Gombe. He spread the word of what she was learning. It did not take long for the National Geographic Society to give Jane enough money to stay at Gombe for another year. It was the best gift in the world. <clears throat> How alike 
are humans and chimp chimps and humans. It may surprise you to know this, but a human being is more like a chimp than a mouse is like a rat. Why are humans and chimps so alike? The reason is that they come from a common ancestor, an ape-like creature who lived on Earth somewhere between four and eight million years ago. Even a quick look at humans and chimps shows many similarities. Humans and chimp faces are alike. They show the emotions they feel, like happiness, sadness, and fear. Both humans and chimps have hands with thumbs. What can't be seen is the brain inside the skull of a chimp or human. Both have a large brain for the size of their body, for their body size. That's what makes them smart animals. The DNA of humans and chimps is almost exactly the same. DNA determines the makeup of any animal. There's just a little more than a 1% difference between the two species. Yet, that little difference counts for a lot. It accounts for why chimps don't understand how to grow food and why they are unable to speak or make art or music. And although chimps do make simple tools, they can't make machines or think the same kind of hard, deep thoughts as humans. And here is an odd fact. Unlike humans, chimps do not cry tears.